Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News. Bringing you a magnetic excursion update Thursday, November 20th, around 10.15 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. The Indonesia volcanic eruption yesterday with deadly pyroclastic flows sent ash up to 54,000 feet. That is the largest eruption in quite some time. We've got a lot of snow to talk about and flooding in Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis. Buckle up, buttercup, and keep calm. It's boom time. What caused the hailstorm in Phoenix the other day? Well, weather experts explain the icy phenomenon and they blame a cold front. <laughs> Here are some photos of the epic ice storm in Phoenix just yesterday with lightning. Uh, and many people that have lived there their entire life have never seen anything like this. Now, if you've been following the channel for quite some time, we predicted a decade ago that there will be an increase in hail as the magnetosphere wanes. And that's what we're seeing. And that's what we predicted. So go get it. Flood devastated Texas hill country facing another notable flood threat from stalling storms. And it happened. A level three of four risk of flooding was in place today for nearly 70,000 people. And the flooding is real. Take a look at this. This is flash flooding in the Texas hill country. Obviously not as bad when it swept away dozens of children and families. But flooding nonetheless. A school bus carrying 13 students crashes in southwest Colorado. This is just over the divide from Pagosa in South Fork. No one was injured, but winter has arrived early. A forecast shows another 12 inches of snow possible in parts of Colorado through Saturday morning. Uh, 10 inches potentially for Wolf Creek. Next week could be epic. And the full forecast coming up soon. TornadoHQ.com live showing... A tornado warning just moments ago in Texas. The storms have moved east and everything quiets down overnight. But you can see on the map here where the precipitation is occurring currently in the central U.S. And the snow forecast is epic. We'll get to that in just a moment. But now the full forecast. We've got widespread showers and thunderstorms in Southern California and the Southern Plains into the mid-Mississippi Valley. Isolated strong to severe thunderstorms and widespread heavy rainfall are possible across the Southern Plains into Arkansas. Widespread showers with a slight chance of thunderstorms are possible across Southern California as well. Flood warnings down there in the desert regions. Urban flooding, rock and mudslides, as well as minor debris Debris flows near the burn scars are possible, so heed the warnings in Southern Cali. Uh, and in Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis, the storms are moving east and calming down. Good news there. But the flooding was epic earlier today, as that footage showed. As we made our way home today in the Four Corners region, we were moving through clouds, and it was snowing uh, earlier this evening. It's now still precipitating snow in the high country, and more snow is coming by the end of the weekend. We've got... Fog warnings for the central U.S. and down in the southeast, including the panhandle of Florida. So heed those warnings as well and drive safely. Seismic update. No real quakes of note. A moderate uptick in activity worldwide, but nothing big. Good news there. The Indonesian volcanic eruption yesterday with pyroclastic flows sent deadly ash cloud 54,000 feet. Holy macaroni. It swept over a bridge and burned people's flesh off. We've talked about this. They're not reporting it on the news, but these are Darwin Awards. There were people on a bridge as this pyroclastic flow came down, uh, and they, they, they just think this is smoke or something, but when it hit the bridge, this 500-degree centigrade uh, pyroclastic flow burned many idiots that continued to stand there and film. Yeah, they're not reporting on the fatalities yet, but that will come out in the coming times. It's just a horrible event here. And take a look at this shot. Holy macaroni, this guy, well, 
I hope well, he's on a scooter so he can rapidly move away. But this pyroclastic flow is moving down that river valley and well, people just don't heed the warnings. This is a sped up version. We showed it last night, but it's absolutely insane. This is that pyroclastic flow moving in the same areas that these pyroclastic flows move in the low areas of the valleys. Um, it was so extreme. This is the biggest pyroclastic flow ever from Semeru uh, in decades that it extended past the original valley and burned acres and acres of forests uh, in the jungle here, as well as people standing on the bridge. Bad news there. Our hearts, thoughts, and prayers go out to all those affected in this catastrophe. As we can see, the second pulse here moving through the bridge. And this is the one. Okay, let's turn this down. This is the one that burned the people filming it. Yeah, you, if a pyroclastic flow is occurring, you want to move perpendicular directly away from it as fast as possible. You don't want to stand there with your camera and get the flesh burnt right off of your bones. That's not what you want to do. But in fact, that is what happened. Worldwide Volcano News for the 20th of November. Fuego to 15,000 feet. Santa Guito to 14,000 feet. Raventador. Sporadic volcanic ash. 7,000 foot blast there. White Island puffing to five. 5K. Sun Gay to 21,000 feet. An eruption reported at Semadu. Ibu puffing and passing today as well. We've got Swanasima to 6,000 foot today. Semadu, an eruption was reported. Kanleon on the list, an eruption uh, to 9,000 feet. Kreshininikov, the shock awakened volcano in the Kamchatka, still puffing. White Island, 2,000 feet. Sakurajima, 11,000 foot blast today, the biggest in weeks. 15,000 foot puff at Fuego. Uh, we got 17,000 foot at Raventador. Ibu, an eruption was reported, wrapping up the list for the day, bringing us to space weather. We've got multiple coronal holes headed towards us in probably three or four days. They'll be earth facing. By the end of the week, in seven days, uh, they will be geo effective, meaning these coronal hole streams would reach Earth. Sending us into low level. Oh, well, this is transequatorial. We could get a big stream out of here if the hole broadens and we could actually get the G2 storm. We've got active regions turning around the land, which is going to make space weather spicy for the next week or so. So buckle up, Buttercup. Even though we're heading down into solar minimum, we still have some activity to wade through. And the BZ did sh shift south earlier today, sending us into moderate geomagnetic instability, uh, but everything has recovered. Still a chance for Aurora up in high latitudes and KP hovering around three. Flaring has gone dead, but when this baby turns around the limb, one, two, there's actually probably two regions. We're going to have some flaring, equatorial flaring and earth facing, in my opinion. So buckle up. More space weather to come in solar cycle 25. A calcite deposit from southern Nevada reveals 580,000 years of climate history. This is as good as ice core data, but more specific to precipitation because these calcite formations or travertine deposits in these caves occur as groundwater levels rise and fall. And the wetter it is, the more calcite, the drier it is, the less calcite. So we get an idea about precipitation on the surface from these caves. And that's exactly what this particular deposit is showing. Over a half a million years of high quality climate data. Climate history recorded in a calcite deposit in southern Nevada cave indicates that the hot, arid southwestern United States experienced significant shifts in temperature and rainfall over the last half a million years. And here's the paper that just came out a week ago. Controls on the Southwest U.S. hydroclimate over the last six interglacial cycles. And what it reveals is a 100% corroboration with the Vostok ice core data time and time again. Yeah. This whole fraud, this whole climate change fraud that it's all your fault and CO2 controls the climate is such nonsense that these climate shifts represent 
10 to 20 degree C shifts multiple, a half a dozen times in the last half a million years. And none of them were catastrophic. You know why? Because we're still here. Yeah, we're not going to die. We're not going to die off with a two or two degree C change. It's the 20 degree C change that still hasn't killed us. We've been around for this entirety of the graph and I'm making a podcast right now, which means that we are resilient. Well, and these shifts might be civilization ending, but they are certainly not human ending because I'm still here. You want the fastest high-speed internet? Check out Elon Musk's Starlink deal. Uh, we are an affiliate with uh, Starlink and we are offering the cheapest possible entry into Starlink. No upfront hardware costs, free professional setup in select areas. Just type in your service address and see if you qualify for a free $500 Starlink. Just 80 bucks a month for residential light and you will have blazing fast speeds. It'll blow your mind. It's not like cable. It's not like anything else. No, they're fooling you. This is the real deal. And the good news about Starlink is if you have a backup generator or power supply and the grid goes down, the internet goes down, but not Starlink. You could power up your computer on your Jenny and turn on Starlink and you will be connected to the world. I believe this is the ultimate survival tool in a grid down scenario, Starlink, because you, it operates independently. Are you picking up what we're putting down? I hope so. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. The most important thing you can do to help the channel grow is subscribe right now. Hit the subscribe button and be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. Be a hero. Hit the subscribe. Do it now. Do that. Yeah.